What's up, Buck fans? Real Bucks talk back with another film study. Today we're gonna go over the Rams versus Bucks Monday night matchup defensive analysis. I mean, a lot of this is Bucks beating themselves again with these flags. I can't, we can't get it out of our own way at times, but ended up being a very close game. But things like this, especially on the goal line, which the end result is gonna be a touchdown. Plus, what you see with the touchdown and why are the Bucks beating themselves? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, here on the touchdown, again, just rushing three, not a good idea. Um, that is something the Bucks have to get out of. I know they're dropping back into zone coverage. They're trying to maximize the coverage, but just doesn't work because our guys just don't really know how to play zone correctly. Again, not getting the depth on the receiver there, reading the quarterback's eyes instead of going with who's coming into that zone. So it's just not not good uh, for the Bucks defense, especially when they're only rushing three. They got to be aggressive in their attack um, throughout the game. And here again, a flag. What's, what's up with the flags? And this is two crucial times. I mean, it could have been 14-6 with four minutes left in the second half or second quarter. But because of this, they give up two touchdowns. What's going up with that? That's easily fixed. And then on this touchdown, just look at the top of your screen. Jamil Dean's been just taking advantage of the last four weeks. This bad assignment. I mean, just literally giving up inside. Your whole body's facing outside easy for the wide receivers to run inside leverage inside slant move and you're beat already you beat yourself on this what'd you see yeah this is bad execution um you know, like you said from jamel dean you really you can't let that you know happen it's too easy for the receiver to make uh this opportunity um for the touchdown and but you know going back to the play before the offsides you know that's that stuff has to stop especially on third down and you know you have opportunity to get them off the field uh, you have to be better in that scenario. Yeah, points. That's just three instead of six. Massive difference. And on this one, everyone knew the missed tackles. Cooper Cup had one hell of a damn day against the Buccaneers. But looking at the play in general, we're hitting hitting a zone. You've heard this over and over with us at Real Bucks Talk. Okay, we have this illusion of pressure, but if you're going to drop back into a zone, stick to your zone. Devin White's supposed to get that middle of the field, correct? Where is Cup going to catch this ball? Right where he should have been, but he's going to go ahead and hit this dragging defender, which he should just let him drag into the other person's zone, and look what ends up happening. Oh, that area where he should have been. Oh, Cooper Cup. Let's take this all away. Then missed tackles. But missed tackles, again, something that can't happen, happen especially against the Chiefs next week. But what did you see here? This guy's doing its their jobs, you know. That's what needs to, to take place. You know, Devin White needs to be in his area, like you said. There, there's no reason to, you know, make disrupt that timing there. You know, he's already going into your next guy's zone. So let him let him do that. Let him take that place. Um, you're supposed to be in an area, you know, it's supposed to be kind of like a, a, a cover two look, maybe a cover three. So someone's gotta be in the middle there to to take that away. And, and that guy's not there, and then Cooper Cup does the rest, makes us pay. Yeah, and then there's just a lot of missed tackles. I mean, even here, SMB, this Cup just doing his thing here and just making it one little five yard play turn into like a 15, 20 yard play. To me, Winfield making one mistake where he usually, he's a rookie either way. He's last line of defense, he's rushing in, he's, he, he's reading the play correctly, but he just gives way too much coming downhill leaving his wide open space right there. I mean, you're the last line of defense and it shows right here because this is a massive game. Ends up giving them the three points that they needed to eventually win the game. That was the difference in the game. I think this is just one assignment that was just missed or overcommitted too much. Everyone loves how we only rush three players. Again, look at the line. A lot of people there. They eventually only rush three. What do you feel about this rushing three? Uh, it doesn't work, um, you, you know, especially when it's third down situations. You you got to be aggressive. You got to force the issue. Um, you you need to need to be playing aggressive on their receivers. You know that you know they're just going to go for the sticks, and, and that's what you have to play for. So I don't understand why, you know, they're not doing that. You got to get pressure on golf. You know, get the ball out of his hands quickly, and that's just too much time to read and and make the play. Either way, play your assignment. I mean, if you're Dropping back, Golson actually does a pretty good job here in the middle of the zone. Devin White looking at the quarterback, lets this guy literally cross his face, and he's jumping out over here. 
I think you all know what we feel about Devin White's zone ability. He just doesn't have it yet in his game. But to me, yeah, live and die by your identity. You rush the ball pass rusher very, very well. Keep doing it. Stop beating yourselves and giving up chunks like this. And this is, yes, it looks like a little bit of pressure, but in reality, you're just letting him make a decision easier because there's not much there to force the issue. But we keep going on. Then they did this no huddle a whole lot. I mean, yes, we're only rushing three yet again. It looks like it's only one guy because that no huddle got us so off base and just big chunks. What do you see here? This is just good execution by the Rams. I mean, they had a soft guard, you know, like you said, with the, the no huddle. So this is a good play. You know, you see the disruption there with Barrett and, and David. They bump into each other. So, I mean, that slows down everything. Um, again, I don't know why you're rushing David and not Shaq Barrett, but, you know, that remains to be seen. Again, they're trying to elude pressure here or fake the pressure and bring it from different angles. But. Just nothing worked on, on this one because it wasn't set up well. I mean, you're rushing Levante and and uh, Devin White, and you just it's not going to work in that situation. We gotta give credit to the Rams though. I mean, they ran some perfectly executed plays, and then this is to the the credit to those that say you can't do play action successfully if you don't have a running game. Rams didn't run the ball well at all, and look at what happened to these linebackers when they can't run the ball. Wide open holes because of play action fakes. Correct. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. They ran play action exclusively in this game, and it works. I mean, they set everything up off of it. You know, they have motion, they have the screen game, they have everything designed, quick passing game, and, yeah, look at all that space you create with that illusion of the run because you still have to respect it. And talking about Cooper Cup, the man's an animal. I mean, check him out top of the screen. Look what he does at Carlton Davis on this route. And no one touches him. Nasty move on the release, catches the ball, and then scoop, put on the brakes, brakes, and let me get out of bounds and just let you know that I beat you. But overall, you got to respect what he did. I mean, nasty. Like, head fakes, overcommitted inside, easy target for his quarterback. Hell of a game by Cooper Cup. Yeah, that, that's how you went. That's, what, that's how you went on, um, you know, third down. I mean, this is, again, another third down situation. We're not playing aggressive enough here because, again, this is what they're going to do. They're going to find ways to to win at the sticks, and that's definitely winning as you create a lot of separation there. Now, it wasn't all bad. They did keep us in the game. JVP here with his interception, I believe it's his second of the year. This is just doing your film study, doing your homework. He's reading, okay, they always like to do little running back screens, little short passes. We kind of touched on this in the preview. A fat guy will get an interception. I don't know if 265 is a fat guy, but it's more than 220. <laughs> well, what did you see here? Uh, this is just film, good film study. I mean, he reads that, you know, a screen is coming. So he does a good job of just staying back, um, holding up his guy. He's looking in the backfield and it really makes a nice play to uh, catch this football and then get some yards after it. It's a shame that our offense couldn't score after this turnover. This was pretty much the difference in the game because – the Rams got a turnover. They capitalized on it, and they end up beating us by three. That was really the big difference here. This is a turnover that we did score on, I believe, to tie the game at 24. This is a big play. Good job by Jordan Whitehead just reading it. You know, he knows that they were running a lot of inside post routes with their guys, um, and just a good job of coming downhill. Four rushers, what do you know? <laughs> and then you got man across the field. Everyone's on a man, and you have cover two, man. Okay, let's how, see how this works out. Looks good, looks good. Pressure and accelerated decision. I like it. Let's do it more, right? <laughs> good job, yeah, Jordan definitely. Whitehead. Good job by the offense to execute after, but this is what we want to see more of. And then JPP had himself one hell of a day. I, I'm just going to let him stomp it out over here, and we'll touch on more of how good of a game he had. You wish he could have intercepted that too. <laughs> but uh, check him out here. What he did in the running game, taking on two defenders, tight end and a right tackle, getting through the double team, making a play. I'll let you cover the next one. JPP here, again, just dominating at the line of scrimmage. He's against the tight end. He's going to abuse him. And he just creates, you know, the the lane for his defenders to, to make the play on the running back. Uh, but he was, yeah, very dominant in this game. Probably the, one of the best players uh, for the Bucks in this one as he was just consistent. Pretty much all season he's been doing this. It's his motor, his mentality. Like he doesn't like to lose, and you can see it. I mean, 
he made hustle plays I even include in this. So let's all play like JPP and good things will end up happening. Now let's Definitely. touch on William Golson as well. He literally makes like one or two of these a game where he just dominates in the running game. Just pushes his guy back, mans up, gets off, sheds, and then his little goofy dances. But what'd you see here? Yeah, again, just playing downhill. This is to our strengths. Uh, you know, when we're attacking and we dominated again in this one against their run game, they didn't have much. So just, you know, being in your gap, being a sound, you know, sound assignment. Good job by William to uh, close in on the running back and, and destroy. And we mentioned film study. Check out SMB reading this play in front of them. Just read and react, reading the guys coming over. We showed this in the preview as well. Robert Woods gets a handoff. SMB did his homework, makes a play behind the line for a huge loss. What'd you see? Right, yeah, it goes right into film study, and this is one where you know they let, they run that motion quite often, and they can either hand it off to the receiver or hand it off to the back. And good job by SMB just reading here, making a nice shoestring tackle, and that was a big play for the Bucks defense. Hopefully, we can get a lot more plays like this against the Chiefs. It's going to be a tough one. But other than that, guys, happy Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoy the content. Make sure to hit that like button down below for us to support the channel. Comment, subscribe if you haven't. And with that said, until the next one.